As the heir of a wealthy family, I strategy April for five years, but she remained unmoved, until the second strategy people arrived. He was confident and quickly spent a night with April. I admitted my defeat and prepared to retreat in silence. Who knew that when she couldn't find me? April's eyes turned red from crying. Chapter 1 When Santiago arrived in this world, I knew that even the system had given up on me. Standing at April's door, I could hear the sound of their laughter through the door panel, squeezing the box of chocolates in my hand. I turned and left. This was my last chance, and I still failed. Sometimes, you have to admit that the connection between people is a very subtle thing. For example, even though April was my target, I accidentally really fell in love with her. For example, no matter how hard I tried, she never took a step toward me. The laughter on the other side of the door felt like a knife stabbing my heart. It seems that fairness has no place in matters of the heart. Santiago had only just arrived, yet he received the tenderness I had sought for five years but could never attain. Chapter 2 I went home and quietly waited for the system's punishment, but it never came. At midnight, the system arrived, albeit late. I made a special request for you, it said, in the same gentle female voice, though now it sounded out of breath. Given that aside from failing to conquer the target, you've performed well in other aspects of this world, even expanding the Chan Corporation's scale by twofold, making significant contributions to this world, there are now two follow-up options. First, I can assign you a new target, and you'll have another five years. If you succeed, you can return to your original world and regain your healthy body. Second, the conquest is cancelled. You can't return to your original world, but you can stay here and continue living as Paul. I was stunned for a moment. A new target. In the original world, I had never been in a relationship. The only clumsy love and sincerity I had ever known were given to April in this world. Five years had already drained all my illusions about love. And staying here, in the original world, I was weak and sickly, bedridden for years, with no family or friends. Here, although I had come for the conquest, I had family, friends, and the Chan Corporation, which I built with my own hands. On countless sleepless nights, my partners and I strategized, negotiated, and expanded our business. I treated everyone and everything here with genuine care. Could I let that go? I wiped away the dampness gathering in the corners of my eyes. I couldn't. I choose the second option. Are you sure, conqueror? Once you choose the second, you will never be able to return to your original world. I closed my eyes. Yes, thank you. The system sighed. No need for thanks. You've already given it your all these past five years. Besides, we've been partners for so long now. Even though I'm just a system, I have feelings too. I've seen all your efforts. April just wasn't good enough for you. Today is the last day. Tomorrow, I'll move on to my next job. Paul, I wish you happiness in this world. Every day from now on. Happiness. April's face appeared in my mind again. Yeah. Even the system has grown to share my sentiment. Which shows just how much April must have hated me. But it doesn't matter anymore. From now on, I won't like her anymore. Chapter 3 The next day, I went to work as usual. I opened my phone to handle business. And April's message was still pinned at the top. The last message was one I had sent her. April, I've learned how to make your favorite hazelnut chocolate. How about I bring it over this weekend? There was no reply. It had sunk into the sea, as always. Over these long five years, aside from the rare moments when she showed a hint of affection, it all felt like a one-man show. The first time was when we both had too much to drink at a business event. On the way back, I wouldn't let go of her sleeve, and even ruined her custom-made silk gown by vomiting on it. She didn't give me her usual cold stare. Even though she was also drunk, she calmly cleaned both herself and me up, then took me home. She brushed my teeth, washed my face, and threw me into the bathtub. That night, in my dazed state, I clung to her like a koala bear. When I felt the warmth of her lips, I thought I was dreaming. Her kiss was proactive yet gentle, and that night passed in a haze of passion and dreams. But when I woke up the next morning, there was no one by my side, only the Lu family's housekeeper, warming up breakfast politely asking what I wanted to eat. Another night was after a business failure, when I had been taken advantage of by a competitor and suffered heavy losses. That night, I sat alone by the river drinking. When April's car suddenly stopped by the roadside, she said she had just happened to pass by. You're already an amazing CEO. One failure is no reason to wallow in self-pity. That night, she stayed with me by the river for a long time. In the end, I passed out in her arms, and she had her driver help me into her car and take me home. In the car. I lay in her arms, and in my drunken state, I tried to reach for her lips, but she dodged me. Later, I found out that she had come to comfort me because she didn't want my bad state to affect an important business meeting the next day. That meeting was crucial to the Lu family's interests. It had always been like this for the past five years. Whenever I thought I had gotten a sweet date, cold water would be dumped on me, 
The cruel reality reminded me time and time again. April didn't like me, not even a little. All the moments I clung to were nothing but fantasies. Chapter 4 I raised my hand and cancelled the pinned message. At noon, my assistant Pablo came in and asked, Mr. Chan, you haven't given me today's lunch for Miss Lu. I paused for a moment. I didn't make it. No need to send anything. The Chan Corporation and the Lu Corporation are located in the Twin Towers, very close to each other. April has a sensitive stomach and allergies, so her food needs to be specially prepared. But despite all the precautions, there were still several times when she ended up in the hospital due to accidentally eating something she was allergic to. I didn't trust anyone else with her food, so I made it myself, no matter how busy or tired I was the night before. I always prepared her lunch and had my assistant deliver it to her. From now on, there's no need to deliver it, I said. Someone new will be making it for her. Pablo looked confused but nodded and left. Who knew that at one o'clock? While I was taking a nap, the phone suddenly rang. It was April's secretary, Emma. Mr. Chan, she sounded apologetic. Sorry to bother you, but there's no lunch delivered today, and Miss Lu is still waiting. I was silent for a moment. Emma, I'm here. Mr. Chan, before I started delivering lunch to Miss Lu, what kind of special meal did you usually order for her? Ah, uh, I think it was a 1,000 yuan special meal. Then continue ordering that. And, I said calmly, tell Miss Lu that I won't be delivering lunch anymore. Chapter 5. Getting woken up from a nap tends to make one irritable, but I didn't expect that by 3 p.m. Pablo came in again and told me April had a stomachache. It seems she ate something too spicy. Emma's very worried. Miss Lu refuses to go to the hospital. Pablo continued. She said that in the past when Miss Lu had a stomachache, you made her some medicinal soup. Google it. Sorry. Have her Google it herself. I looked up. And if she still doesn't know how to make it, I suggest going to the hospital sooner rather than later. Allergic reactions can be fatal. To be fair to Emma, I used to care about April a lot. Anytime she had even the slightest discomfort, I would worry endlessly. Over time, she got used to notifying me. Just then, the receptionist called again. Mr. Chan, there's a Mr. Santiago here to see you. He said if you hear the word conquest, you'll understand. I paused. Send him up. Chapter 6 When Santiago entered my office, he looked around curiously. You're the previous conqueror that the system mentioned, right? He said as he casually sat across from me. Can I call you by your first name? I nodded. That's fine. So, you really couldn't conquer April in five years? He asked. I hesitated. That's right. That's strange. I think she's pretty easy to win over. He shrugged. She even let me stay at her place last night. I was stunned. Of course. It was because she was drunk. So nothing really happened. He winked. But man. She gets drunk so easily. She seems like the type who'd be easy to seduce. And her lips are pretty soft too. Felt nice. Santiago. I interrupted him. What exactly are you here for? Ah. He seemed annoyed. Brother. I came to ask for your help. April doesn't talk much. And it was already past two in the afternoon. And she still hadn't eaten. I didn't want to just sit there. You know. But when I asked what she wanted to eat. She wouldn't say. She just told me to decide. So. I ordered takeout based on what I like. Then after she ate the stir-fried noodles. Her stomach started hurting, and I freaked out. I was worried all the goodwill I'd built up last night would be ruined. Her secretary mentioned that you used to make her lunch, so you must know what she likes. Since you're not pursuing her anymore, why not pass on your experience to me? Come on, help me out, brother. I actually don't have much conquest experience. I shook my head. Even though we're tasked with completing a game, the people here are real. I've always believed that you should exchange sincerity for sincerity. He looked at me, confused. But aren't they just targets and NPCs? This world isn't much different from ours, I said softly. Whether you're trying to win someone over or not, you should take the time to truly understand the other person, not just rely on so-called experience. But, I don't have time, he paused, sighing. I came to this world for my mother. She's dying, and I need to complete the mission within a year to save her. He buried his head in his hands, clearly in pain. Brother, I really need to finish this mission quickly. It's the only way I can go home and save her, I sighed. I stood up, walked over to the bookshelf and pulled out a small notebook. This notebook contains the special recipes I've developed over the past five years, along with the things to watch out for if she has an allergic reaction or a stomachache. If it's useful to you, take it. He quickly took it but, after flipping through a few pages, exclaimed, Wow. This is so detailed. This isn't just a guide. It's, it's sincerity. But this time, I couldn't say it out loud. After all, it's ridiculous, isn't it? As a failure, what right do I have to talk about sincerity? By the way, one more favor, brother. He put his hands together as if in prayer. Even though April knows you were a conqueror, she doesn't know about me. Please keep that a secret for me. Okay. I froze. What did you say? You said. April knows what? Santiago crossed his legs. Yeah. 
She drunkenly told me last night. She overheard your conversation with the system and knows you were trying to conquer her. Chapter 7. Santiago's words were like a pebble dropped into water, stirring slight ripples in my heart, but the ripples quickly faded. Whether she knew or didn't know, what difference did it make? In the end, it was all over. A few days later, I attended a business banquet, and April was there too. Sure enough, Santiago was by her side, her arm linked through his. I only glanced at them briefly before turning back to smile and chat with others. Socializing is a tiring job, but sometimes, it's unavoidable. As I was talking with the president of Lu Corporation, he suddenly waved to someone behind me. Miss Lu, over here. I turned around to see April approaching, without Santiago by her side. I was just wondering why I saw Mr. Chan but not you. The president of Lu Corporation said in his usual lively manner, I've been hearing rumors lately that you two are about to tie the knot. Is it true? In the past, others had teased me about April before, and every time, I'd foolishly hope she'd say something that would surprise me. How ridiculous. April's expression remained calm. Although she wasn't as cold-faced as usual, she didn't respond either. Mr. Lu, it's just a rumor. Nothing to believe. I patted his shoulder. Besides, Miss Lu brought a date tonight. He's quite handsome, didn't you see? Oh, really? Mr. Lu's eyes flickered playfully between the two of us. I must have missed that. We exchanged a few more casual remarks before I found an excuse to leave and went up to the second floor balcony. There was a sofa here, and whenever I got tired, I liked to sit there and rest. Behind the chair was a door that connected to a second floor lounge. This door wasn't soundproof, and just as I sat down, a familiar male voice came through clearly. System. Paul is such an idiot. Do you not interview your conquerors, or do you just pick them based on looks? Haha. <laughs> I just put on a little act in front of him, and he actually bought that story about my mom being sick. Was it my great acting or is he just dumb? He's so naive though I have to admit he's good looking, almost a match for me. No wonder he couldn't conquer April in five years. Honestly, I'm amazed. He's just a failure stuck in this world, an NPC in my game, and yet he had the nerve to lecture me about sincerity, telling me to treat everyone with genuine care. Ha ha, what a joke. Too loud, I said. Silence fell inside. After a moment of rustling, the door opened, and Santiago stood there, face pale. Paul, here's some advice, I said calmly. This door isn't soundproof. You're disturbing my rest. His expression changed several times. Brother, don't get the wrong idea. I didn't mean to say it like that. It doesn't matter anymore. He seemed anxious. You're not going to be petty about this and tell April I'm a conqueror, right? I shook my head. I won't. I'm not interested in your affairs. Rest assured. But, from now on, don't come looking for me. And don't ask me for any more tips on conquering. I don't like you. He bit his lip and finally muttered a fine before turning and walking away probably off to find April. Chapter 8. The balcony was finally quiet again. I closed my eyes to rest for a while, but when I opened them, April was standing in front of me. I had no idea when she'd arrived, and I didn't know how long she had been watching me. You always hide here when you're tired. She spoke. Do you need something? I stood up, frowning. She hesitated for a moment. Santiago is simple-minded. We're just colleagues. Don't make things difficult for him just because I brought him here. Ah. So she came to blame me. Looking at April. I suddenly felt a bit foolish for how I used to be. You're overthinking this. Miss Lu, I smiled. Why would I trouble your assistant? Jealous because he can be by your side. She frowned. You don't have to say it like that. April, I'm not trying to conquer you anymore. She froze. What did you say? There was no need to hide anything anymore. You've known all along that I came here with a conquest mission. Haven't you? I smiled. Was it that night? The first night? After Santiago told me. I thought about it for a long time. I had always been careful to only speak to the system when I was alone, except for that night, our first night together. In the middle of the night, I woke up, feeling so full of happiness that I could barely contain it, unable to fall back asleep. I crept out of bed and into the living room, where I summoned the system. 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 Am I about to succeed in the conquest? Well, just having a physical relationship doesn't mean you've conquered her. She has to fall in love with you. I remembered her passionate kiss before falling asleep and was full of confidence. She'll love me. The system chuckled. Well, I'll congratulate you in advance then. When it happens, I'll probably be so happy I'll spin in circles. After chatting with the system for a while, I heard a faint noise from the bedroom. I immediately fell silent and tiptoed back. April was still fast asleep. I relaxed. I'm guessing you were awake then and overheard my conversation with the system. Right. I smiled. She didn't respond, which was as good as an admission. I'm sorry for bothering you for so long, but don't worry. It won't happen again. I turned to leave. But suddenly, she grabbed my hand. What do you mean by, it won't happen again? Her eyes widened, her voice carrying an almost imperceptible tremble. I mean, 
Since you don't love me, my conquest mission has failed. The system is gone. I won't try to conquer you anymore. You can rest easy. From now on, we won't have any interaction outside of work. Of course, if you'd rather not work with me at all, I can gradually scale back the collaboration between Chan Corporation and Lu Corporation. Though I don't see the point in throwing away money, I turn to leave. So all these years of saying you liked me was just for the conquest. Her voice suddenly came from behind me. I stopped. She stepped closer. Did you really only see me as a target, with no other feelings involved? That's not true, but with all my love fading away, what was the point of explaining? Think whatever you like. People always believe what they want to believe. For five years, I foolishly believed that my love was expressed through all the little acts of care, the affectionate gazes, and the relentless pursuit. Even if she knew I was a conqueror, love and sincerity should still be felt, but she chose to believe in her own assumptions. Turning a blind eye, footsteps suddenly approached from behind. Paul. April rushed forward and grabbed me, like she was trying to hold onto something about to slip away, but I was never her treasure. Never. You've been lying to me, haven't you? You never really loved me. She stared into my eyes. I knew what she wanted. She wanted proof that she wasn't wrong, that she hadn't made a mistake. I met her gaze. It was all sincere. I said, what? She froze. I came with a mission to conquer you, but I really did love you. April, in the business world, you and I are alike, adept at reading people. Did you really never realize that my feelings for you were genuine? Chapter 9. When I left, April was still standing there on the balcony, dazed. After exchanging a few more pleasantries with some business associates, I was ready to head home. Pablo was waiting for me at the entrance. Mr. Chan, are we heading back now? Yes, and Miss Lu. We're not waiting. In the past, whether it was attending events or meetings, I would always wait for April. She has always been a lightweight when it comes to alcohol, but in the business world, it's impossible to avoid drinking. Every time, I wouldn't feel at ease until I saw her assistant help her into the car, but... Pablo hesitated before reminding me in a low voice. It seems like Miss Lu has been looking at you this whole time. I froze for a moment and turned around. April had somehow made her way to the hall entrance as well, standing not far away. Santiago seemed to be chatting with her, smiling, but her eyes were fixed on me. Our eyes met, but this time, I was the first to look away. Let's go, I won't be waiting anymore. Chapter 10 The next few days were busy because my grandmother's birthday was approaching. I hosted a birthday banquet at home, inviting some of her friends, including Mr. Lu from the Lu family. Unexpectedly, April came too. She was wearing a very nice brooch, and after thinking for a while, I realized it was the birthday gift I had given her one year. I even designed the brooch myself, but she had never worn it before. During dinner, I personally served noodles I had made to each elder. Grandma Chan looked at me and couldn't help but express her admiration. Oh my, why don't I have a grandson like Paul? These noodles are just too delicious. He's handsome, manages a company, and can cook too. Old Mr. Chan, how on earth did you get such a wonderful grandson? You don't stand a chance, my grandmother replied with a laugh. It's all in the genes. Everyone burst into laughter, and another elder glanced at the quiet April beside her and teased. Paul's no longer young. When does he plan to get married? In the past, elders had teased April and me like this before. My affection for her was obvious to anyone with eyes, but she never responded. I stood up, smiling as I poured wine for the elder. I'm still single. If you know anyone suitable, I'd be happy to meet them. If it works out. I'll give you a big red envelope when I get married. Clink. April's cup tipped over. The servants rush to clean the table, her dress, and the brooch. I'll take care of the brooch myself. Thank you, she said softly. April, would you like me to introduce someone for you too? The elder continued to tease. April's hand paused as she wiped the brooch. No, that won't be necessary. Thank you. Chapter 11. Everyone present, including my grandmother, were sharp-minded elders. After a while, my grandmother suddenly asked Mr. Liu if he'd like to play a game of chess with her. Naturally, Mr. Liu accepted, and the other elders immediately expressed their desire to watch. In an instant, the table was left with only April and me, to be honest. In the past, I would have been overjoyed at the chance to be alone with her. I would have racked my brain to come up with fresh and interesting topics to talk to her about. But now, I had no desire to speak. On the other side of the hall, the atmosphere was lively, people playing chess, others watching and some offering advice, on our side, though, there was nothing but the sound of our bowls and chopsticks, you made the noodles, she suddenly asked, yes, making noodles is quite the skill, yes, who taught you, I put down my bowl, if you don't like them, you don't have to eat them, she froze, that's not what I meant, I'm full, I stood up and headed to the third floor terrace, grandma loves lively celebrations, so I had arranged for fireworks on the terrace, to my surprise, she followed me up there, let me help, 
Everything's ready. You can go downstairs and watch with everyone else. But she didn't leave. Do you need something else? I. I went to the mall yesterday and saw a tie that I thought would suit you. You've got it wrong. Today is my grandmother's birthday. Not mine. The air fell silent again. Just as I finished inspecting everything and was about to head back down. She spoke again. That night. I heard everything. Your conversation with the system. I couldn't stand being deceived. Which is why I left so early the next morning. You didn't hear everything. I said. What? She looked confused. That night. Later. I had said more. After making sure she was asleep. I had sneaked into another room and asked the system one more thing. I asked the system if, after completing the conquest, I could choose to stay in this world. I said, looking up at the dark night sky, I told it I didn't want to leave you, that I wanted to stay with you forever. That night, I was so happy, not just because our relationship had progressed, I was even happier because the system agreed to help me apply for permission to stay with you after the conquest, to stay in this world. Maybe it was fate. I did end up staying in this world but it has nothing to do with April anymore. Chapter 12. After speaking, I turned and went downstairs. April hesitated for a moment, then followed me. Paul. Mr. Chan. The gate staff said there's a Mr. Han here to see you. The housekeeper said at the bottom of the stairs, Santiago. What is he doing here? Curious. I went outside, only to see Santiago standing at the villa entrance, holding a gift box. April followed, equally confused. What are you doing here? I. I heard it's your grandmother's birthday, so I brought a small gift. He stammered, you wouldn't mind. Right, Mr. Chan. I clearly remember telling him not to appear before me again. Mr. Chan, could you come over for a moment? He appeared cautious. I took a couple of steps toward him. Suddenly, he leaned close to my ear. Brother, I'm at a critical stage of my conquest. Help me out by playing along. With that, he grabbed my hand and flung the gift away himself, stumbling back a few steps before collapsing to the ground. Ah. His face twisted in pain as he looked past me at April. From her angle, April couldn't see my hand movements behind me. Realizing Santiago's ploy, I sighed. Sure enough, April quickly approached. What's going on? She asked with a frown. April. I. I was just trying to give Mr. Chan a gift, but, you weren't invited. You shouldn't have come in the first place, April said coldly. W what? His eyes widened, clearly not expecting things to go this way, but this outcome was entirely predictable. The April I know wouldn't be swayed by such petty tricks. She may have been indifferent to me in the past, but she's not a brainless heroine from a novel. If she couldn't see through such a simple ruse, the Lu family would have fallen long ago. Santiago's risky move using me backfired. In the end, April called the villa's steward, and security escorted Santiago out. Once everything quieted down, April turned to me and apologized. It's my grandmother's birthday today. I sighed. If your little boyfriend stunt gets photographed and ends up in the news. I'd appreciate it if you, Miss Lou, could handle it. April frowned. He's not my boyfriend. She suddenly stood in front of me. Paul, I like you. I froze. Looking at her in disbelief, she took my hand. April's hands are beautiful. In the past, I had often hoped that these beautiful hands would one day reach out to hold mine. I've thought it through. I like you. Before. I. I just thought you had ulterior motives for getting close to me. I didn't want to fall for someone who was just using me to complete a conquest mission. I didn't want to give my feelings and be met with betrayal, so I, April, I once heard a saying, I interrupted her, true love never lies, I gently pulled my hand away from hers, April, you don't love me, you're just in love with the idea of protecting yourself from getting hurt, chapter 13, after the fireworks and once all the guests had left, I returned to the villa, these old folks eat so little, the housekeeper commented as she cleaned up, they're getting old, and their appetites are shrinking, then she suddenly chuckled, Except for Miss Lou, she finished every single noodle. She eats so much. It's hard to believe she's the one with stomach issues and allergies. I smiled and headed upstairs to find my grandmother. She was in the study, waving at me excitedly. Paul, come here. I'm going over the chess game I played with old Mr. Lou. Look, what's the best move here? I walked over, sat across from her, and studied the board for a moment before gently placing a piece. Brilliant. Grandma clapped her hands and laughed. Truly brilliant. To think I was the one who taught you go and now you're better than me. She sighed. That's because you're a great teacher. Have you had a falling out with that girl from the Lu family? She asked casually, as if it were nothing. I hesitated. Grandma. Hmm? I don't like her anymore. Oh. She held a chess piece in her hand, her sharp eyes twinkling. You liked her for five years, and now you just don't. Yes. I lowered my head. Do you think? I'm being too impulsive. The air grew quiet. She suddenly put down the chess piece and sat up straight. Grandson. 
Who do you think has the right to be impulsive in this world? I looked up at her, puzzled. Someone who, in their twenties, took over a corporation and doubled its size in just a few short years, accomplishing what his grandparents couldn't in a lifetime, do you think someone like that has the right to be impulsive? Grandma. I stared at her, dumbfounded. She smiled, leaned forward, and patted my head. You, my dear, are anything but impulsive. You've earned the right to be impulsive, and it makes me happy. Tears welled up in my eyes, and I leaned forward, hugging her like a child. Thank you, Grandma. My silly boy, she said softly, there are many wonderful things in this world besides love. Chapter 14 After my grandmother's birthday, I dove back into my busy work schedule. One day, while I was working in the office, the door suddenly opened. To my surprise, it was my distant cousin, who runs a modeling agency abroad. She walked in with ten handsome men of various skin tones. Me, what's going on? My cousin sat down on the sofa and handed me a box. This is a gift from our grandmother. Confused. I took the box and opened it. Inside was a note in my grandmother's handwriting. Grandson, grandma is not old-fashioned. And no matter what, I support you. I nearly spit out my tea. Can you explain what this is about? I asked through gritted teeth, staring at my cousin. She blinked innocently. Oh, isn't it obvious? I visited grandma this morning, and she mentioned that you still don't have a girlfriend. So I shared some knowledge. After thinking about it for a while, Grandma said I should bring these guys to you. They're the best models from my agency. Take a look and pick one you like to chat with. Me, you have one minute to get them out of here. Cousin, no, brother. I went through so much trouble to bring them here. Looking at the ten handsome men in front of me, I pinched the bridge of my nose. Fine, have them go out to the office area and help distribute desserts to the staff. Are you sure you don't want to keep one? Are you sure you want to miss your third round of funding? She instantly changed her tune. They're leaving right away. After the ten models left, my cousin continued to linger. Anything else? She leaned in. Brother, I heard you have a top-notch gym behind your office. Can I take a look? If you keep filling grandma's head with nonsense. I tapped my finger on the desk. I promise I won't do it again. She raised her hands in surrender. Fine. Behind my office, there's a private mini gym. I took her there and pointed to the equipment. If you want, you can pick something and work out. My cousin happily went to exercise. Me. Oh well as long as she's happy. Just as I was getting into a good rhythm on the treadmill, my cousin, who had been lifting weights, suddenly stopped. She looked tense. Brother, I think there's a creepy woman in the building across from us. Ah. She came over and pointed. Look, that woman over there has been staring at us for a while now. I glanced over. April was standing in the office building opposite ours, holding a cup of tea. Her gaze locked on us. My cousin, who's lived abroad for years and didn't know April, shivered and asked, is she a stalker or something? Don't worry about it. I replied calmly. Just close the blinds. Got it. She happily went to pull the curtains but tripped, and I quickly reached out to steady her. From April's angle, it probably looked like we were kissing, and with a soft swish, the curtains closed. Chapter 15 At the end of the day, my cousin came to say goodbye with her ten handsome models in tow. I clenched my eyebrows and told her not to come back unless necessary. After all, it seemed like no female employee had been able to focus on work all afternoon. Even a few of the male employees seemed distracted. As I passed the secretary's office, I noticed Pablo was still there. Why aren't you off work yet? I asked casually. He looked glum. Because Emma has to work overtime today. Emma? Lou Corporation's Emma. What does her overtime have to do with you? She's my girlfriend. Mr. Chan, realizing what he had just said, Pablo quickly stood up, looking like he was about to cry. Uh, um, we're not. It's fine, I said. Still surprised but not planning to interfere. It's good. You're free to date. Don't worry about what I think. No wonder he always knew all the Lu family gossip. Actually, we kind of got together because I kept helping you deliver lunch and messages to Miss Lu. He scratched his head, looking a bit shy. By the way, Mr. Chan, did you know Miss Lu got hurt? Miss Lu somehow cut her hand on some broken teacup shards this afternoon. Emma's taking her to the hospital to get it stitched up. So she's still not off work. Oh, you don't seem too concerned. He mumbled. Nope. I smiled. So from now on, don't bother telling me about Miss Lou. Chapter 16. The next day, I saw April in the company lobby. Her right hand was still wrapped in bandages. Can you give me some time? She asked softly. April. I sighed. If this is about work, you can handle it with the team. It's not about work. She interrupted. Please, Paul. Just five minutes. That's all I'm asking. I frowned and looked at her. She reached out and took my hand. Paul. If what's bothering you is Santiago, I've already made things clear with him, I admit that. At first, 
I used him to get back at you. I hated how much control you had over me. I wanted to make myself like someone else. To try and love someone who genuinely cared about me. But I realized I couldn't do it. Now, I've come to understand that I can't stand seeing you with someone else. Her voice softened. Please, don't be angry anymore. Okay. April, you've misunderstood. I said calmly. This isn't about anyone else. And I'm not angry with you. I just don't love you anymore. And you, you might not have figured out the difference between possessiveness and love. For the past five years, despite the distance between us, she never clearly expressed her feelings. She didn't love me, but she never cut me off completely. She accepted my kindness yet always pushed me away, keeping me holding onto a sliver of hope, always thinking that maybe, just maybe, next time she'd turn around and see me. You just don't want to lose something that was once yours. No, no. She shook her head desperately, her expression filled with pain. I really do love you. In the midst of our conversation, I suddenly noticed Santiago. He stood outside the door like a ghost, our eyes met, and he forced a smile before walking in. April followed my gaze and saw him too. April, why aren't you answering my calls? He took a step closer. Why did you have HR talk to me about cancelling our contract? Why won't you see me? Santiago. April frowned. Maybe I gave you the wrong impression at the start, but we've already made things clear. Made things clear. He suddenly shouted. I like you. I love you. Can't you see that? When we met, you said you liked my personality that I was kind-hearted, that you thought my voice was pleasant, you were falling for me. April paused, I'm sorry, you're a great person, and I know you genuinely like me, but I just don't have feelings for you. Santiago stared at her in shock, then pointed at me, it's because of him, isn't it? He told you, didn't he, told you I'm a conqueror, right? What? April was stunned, how could you be so cruel? He threw the notebook I had given him at me, you used me to test her true feelings, you failed your conquest, so why are you still meddling? You've misunderstood. I didn't tell her. I said calmly. I have no interest in whether you succeed in your conquest or not. You're lying. If you didn't tell her, then why doesn't she like me? His gaze was filled with venom. You failed, so you don't want me to succeed either. There was no point in reasoning with someone so irrational. Security, I called, and someone immediately stepped forward. Santiago was escorted out, still shouting and yelling. April, upon hearing the word, conquest, had been frozen in place since the beginning of Santiago's rant. She trembled as she bent down to pick up the notebook from the floor. This. He asked for it. Since he doesn't need it anymore. Just throw it away. But she held onto the notebook tightly. Unable to process everything. You see. April. What you once thought was certain. Wasn't necessarily true. You've never truly understood how to discern genuine love. And the moment of truth arrived sooner than expected. In a way none of us imagined. Paul. What he said. Her voice trembled. It's all true. I looked her straight in the eye and said calmly. Both Santiago and I are conquerors. Chapter 17. After that, April became more attentive. There were lunches on my desk, daily messages asking how I was, and small gifts from time to time. I heard she was learning how to cook. Everything seemed to have reversed. She suddenly lowered her stance, saying she wanted to do everything I had done for her in the past, but I felt nothing. Months passed, and apart from work, I barely acknowledged her. Yet she continued, one evening after work. A light drizzle fell from the sky as I left the office building. I saw her, as usual, waiting at the door. This time, I didn't ignore her. I walked over. Let's take a walk. Her eyes lit up. Okay, we walked past the corner without an umbrella. Do you remember where we first met? I asked. She froze. It was at this corner cafe. That day, I was excited because, after living in this world for 22 years, I finally got to know who my conquest target was. And then I saw you. Love at first sight. Later. The system told me that you were my conquest target. Do you know how happy I was at that moment? The person I had fallen for at first glance turned out to be my conquest target. What could be more fortunate than that? Paul. She nervously reached out her hand. I. I avoided her hand and smiled. April. This has always been a secret I kept in my heart, a secret tied to the moment I fell for you. When I first started the conquest, before bed, I would often imagine how, on our wedding night, I would tell you this secret. I would kiss you gently, tease you a bit. And when you begged me, I'd lean in and whisper it in your ear. Honey, I actually have a system that asked me to conquer you. But did you know, before the system even told me to, I had already fallen for you. But I never got to live that night, even after five years of waiting. Paul. She grabbed my hand. Her eyes red with tears. I won't make you wait anymore. We. Oui, you're misunderstanding my point. I shook my head, cutting her off. The reason I can talk about this calmly now is because I've truly moved on. That love and passion I had for you over those five years. It's all gone. April. Let's end this where it all began. Chapter 18. April froze. After a moment, 
She shook her head. Paul, I'm not letting go. I love you. I know it took me too long to realize it, but it's not too late to make things right. Paul, I will treat you twice as well from now on. I'll be by your side. Wherever you want to go, I'll go with you. Whatever you want to do, I'll do it with you. It's too late. It's not too late. She gripped my hand tightly. Isn't this the perfect time? You don't have the pressure of a conquest anymore. And I've finally come to understand my own heart. Please give me a chance. Let's be good to each other from now on. Okay. At that moment, a cold laugh came from nearby. If you two are going to be fine, what about me? I turned around. And there, standing before us, was Santiago, whom I hadn't seen in a long time. April, I've done so much for you over the past few months. Why do you keep ignoring me? How can you be so cold and heartless? Do you know what I'll face if I fail my conquest? Why don't you love me? How can you not love me? Paul, a voice suddenly echoed in my mind. System, I was stunned. You're back. I was worried about you. Be careful of the other conqueror. Headquarters has flagged his mental state as critical. Before the words even finished, Santiago had already pulled out a knife. His face pale, his smile terrifying. Why does Paul get to walk away after failing his conquest? But I have to be erased. System, where are you? Show yourself, he shouted, brandishing the knife. Paul cheated. Why doesn't he have to die? He failed just like I did. The system on his side seemed to say something. I don't care. I don't care. He screamed hysterically, suddenly charging at me with the knife. Watch out. April shouted. In that instant, I spun around, disarmed him, and pinned Santiago to the ground with a sharp blow. What? He looked back at me in disbelief, his eyes vacant. H. How is this possible? My family was afraid I'd get kidnapped, so I've been trained in martial arts since childhood. Handling you is child's play. I released him, and he slumped to the floor. I've told you before, the people in this world aren't NPCs in your game. If you want to win someone over, you have to truly understand them, and yet you didn't understand me, but you dared to pull a knife on me. No, no. He muttered, suddenly breaking into tears. Please, system, just give me one more chance. I can do it. Please, don't. Is it time already? There's still time. Right. I can make her love me. She's about to love me. I almost killed Paul, and if I had. April would love me, if all else fails, I'll drug her. I can do it, please. In the distance, the clock tower struck 12 noon. His voice fell silent. Santiago was erased. Chapter 19. The doctors and police arrived shortly after. The official cause of Santiago's death was declared as a sudden heart attack. His path in the game was different from mine. I had chosen to grow up in this world, waiting for my task to arrive, while he had chosen to enter the world partway through. Adopting an established identity to complete his mission. He had no family or friends here. The scene was quickly cleaned up. System. In another world. Will he have a second chance? I asked softly. The system sighed. He signed up for a fast track game contract. The rewards he wanted were not only a healthy body in his original world but also endless wealth. The more you desire. The harsher the punishment for failing. If his system doesn't erase him according to the rules. It would face consequences. Like losing out on promotions and raises. If his system pleaded on his behalf, the best outcome would be for him to return to his original world. But even then, he wasn't going to live much longer in that world either. I sighed. Why, why did this happen? April asked in a daze. He's, really dead. Those are the rules of the game. If you fail to complete the conquest, you're erased. I answered. But, you're perfectly fine. My system made a special request for me. Without her, I would have died on the day you met Santiago. This was always a cruel game. A game where lives were wagered. We. The ones clinging to life in our original worlds, came here with desires. Naturally, we had to follow and accept the rules of the game. I was just lucky enough to glimpse a bit of warmth in an otherwise cold game. How could this happen? April muttered. How could this be? How could someone really die? I don't know. She lifted her hand, trembling slightly. Paul, I really didn't know. You didn't know, I said, turning away from her hand. But for five years, you had countless opportunities to ask me. I had countless moments where I wanted to tell you, but every time, you pushed me away with your coldness. So many times, when I turned to look at her, she looked away. So many times, when I tried to hold her, she turned her back on me. The fear of death for failing the conquest. The emptiness of a love that could never be returned. How I wished she could have turned around, just to see me. Even if she didn't say a word, just listening would have been enough. But she never gave me that chance. It's enough now. She stepped forward grabbing my hand, her voice trembling. Paul, I was wrong. I was wrong to try and test your sincerity. Wrong to not cherish your love. I was arrogant and insecure. Unable to believe you truly liked me. Unwilling to lower myself to reach out to you. You gave me the most precious love. You nearly gave your life for me. Paul, her eyes were red. 
her voice pleading. Please give me one more chance. Okay. I shook my head. It's over. No, it's not over. The conquest may be over, but deep down, you still love me, don't you? She clung to my hand, interlocking our fingers. You didn't leave this world, that's fate, isn't it? I love you, and this time, I'll be the one chasing you. We can start over. I shook my head. In this world, not every broken thing can be mended. After all this time, you still don't understand. I gently took a step back. It's true, I didn't leave this world, but I'm leaving you. That night, when I lay in bed waiting to die, that's when I stopped loving you. This world is filled with things worth loving, beyond just romantic love, family, friends, career, and myself. I love you, she whispered, tears flooding her eyes. Paul, I really do love you, one by one. I pried April's fingers off my hand. April, your love came far too late. Chapter 20. After that, in order to let April give up her hope, I blocked her. Some time later, my grandmother told me that April had resigned as CEO of Lou Corporation, handed the company over to her brother, and left City A. Emma said Miss Lou went looking for the system, Pablo said. The system. She said there's a system in this world, and if she finds it, maybe she can find a way to be reborn or go back in time. I listened, feeling a bit melancholic. What's the point? Instead of wishing for another chance at life, she should cherish the people who will be with her in the future. Maybe she realized that she'd never find anyone who would treat her as well as you did. Mr. Chan, Pablo said wistfully, Pablo and Emma are getting married. I gave him time off for his wedding and also took a day off myself. My system was helping to clean up some of the issues left behind by Santiago's system. Now she was leaving, and I wanted to say goodbye. Holding a beer, I went to the beach and sat on a rock. System, I called out. Hmm? I've been thinking about something these past few days. Go ahead. Why was Santiago's time limit only one year, while mine was five? Uh. She stammered. I smiled. Logically, even though we chose different paths, our task durations should have been the same. Each year, you made special requests for me, didn't you? She fell silent, seemingly a little embarrassed. What did you trade to get me those five years? My performance bonuses, as expected. Did you ever regret it? I chuckled. After all, you've spent five years with someone as slow as me. It must have hurt your career. There was no response. System. Paul. Her voice sounded especially serious. I've never regretted it, because I always believe that people who live sincerely deserve to be treated kindly by the world. I was stunned. The sunset dipped into the horizon, and flocks of seagulls flew by. For some reason, my eyes felt a little misty. Thank you, you're really a kind system. She laughed. It's nothing. Performance metrics aren't that important. What matters is enjoying the work. I had a great time partnering with you. And Paul, you're not slow at all. Those who give their heart shouldn't be mocked or trampled on. Yeah, I wiped the corner of my eye. Will I ever see you again? Maybe chat with you sometimes. I'm afraid not, she said with a hint of sadness. There won't be any more conquerors in this world. So after today, we probably won't meet again. I see. System, it's been five years, and I never asked, do you have a name? We don't have names, only numbers. My number's actually pretty lucky, 520. It symbolizes love, she sighed. Unfortunately, it didn't bring you any luck in love. I shook my head. What I gained here was far more than love. Thank you, little five. I raised my glass toward the distance. The system paused. Every time you were happy, you'd tell me you were going to go twirl. I imagine you must look beautiful when you dance. She laughed. I like the name little five. Goodbye, goodbye. The evening breeze swept by, and I knew little five had left. Turning around. On the other side of the shore was a field of flowers. Every flower swayed gracefully. I stood up and walked toward the sea of flowers. I've decided to stay in this world. A world where there are no longer any conquerors. A world full of unknown wonders. I believe that those who strive to live well will not have bad luck. I believe I will live a vibrant, colorful life. And I believe that, one day in the not-so-distant future, I will fall in love again with someone who's worth it. And this time, I will love boldly, and with certainty, onward, toward the road to the future.